Hi, so this is going to be a quick tutorial of some new stuff that's in the engraver tool. So let's bring that up. Um, I've been working on this direction section before it was just to do, but now it's just a whole bunch of, of kind of confusing stuff, most of which is not quite implemented yet, like all this stuff down here. Uh, this profile thing is not quite totally implemented, but part of it is, so we'll get into that. So let's create a quick engraver object here. Uh, so let's see, let's turn it into the uh, orientation mode tool. So normally, uh, this or before, this was the only way you could change the direction and position and spacing of the lines is with the orientation tool or by using uh, shortcuts. Uh, it's like R, it changes the rotation, S changes the spacing, but you still have to drag around the orientation tool to change the position. Uh, if you want to change the type of lines, there's a few different kinds of built-in lines. So linear like this, you can press left and right to get other kinds. So there's a new one, spiral, uh, which can is uh, any number of spokes. You drag this little knob to change how many spokes. So like there's one, uh, two. I like two because it's it ends up being a, a single continuous line. You can also just click on this to change the direction of the spiral. And the next one is. Uh, the old uh, circular type line, and then also the radial line. Uh, you can over here in this panel. You can now select which kind of line you want. So let's go back to linear. Uh, another feature that I've put in is this little bar here, just beyond the little rotation handle for this burin. You can change the default line thickness for when you're messing around with the base orientation for stuff. So let's see. Uh, another thing that you can do, sort of, is uh, you can't actually change the default profile of a line quite yet. It's almost there, but not quite. But you can change the, the starting point and ending point. Uh, so if you want your points to start closer in, or like not quite from the edge, you can change oh, uh, approximately how they do. I've got to implement better uh, endpoints for those. Right now they're not quite satisfactory, kind of jumps around too much. Uh, you can also implement, or you can also tell it to do a certain amount of randomness from the starting area and randomness for the ending area. Just gives it some more variety in the lines. Uh, let's move these back to zero. And ultimately you'll be able to select like different pre-built lines or define your own lines, but not quite there yet. So uh, this, these two things also go along with the unimplemented profile. So I'll have to deal with those in another tutorial. The next thing is the two randomization options. One is for randomizations of the entire line. So this operates on the entire line, regardless of whatever points are in it. Uh, sometimes that's useful if you just want to have quick effects like that. Uh, where the randomness only works in one direction. Um, the other one is randomization of the points themselves. So like the engraver tool works on these little red sample points. Uh, so if you change the randomization of the points, uh, by default it changes every single one of them, regardless of how the neighboring one is changed. However, you can change that by adjusting the feature size, which is uh, this little bar just underneath the squiggle here. So you can drag that out to make it smooth out a bit. This uses open simplex noise to generate a field of randomness and then uh, displaces the points according to that field. Uh, let's see, so let's move that over here. And so this works for all the different uh, line types too. So it's adjusting again based on the on the open simplex waviness. So you can get a little more sort of fake naturalism out of it rather than the pristine automatic creation. Uh, sometimes you're tinkering with these settings and you don't want it to, to update all the time. In that case, you can uh, click that green circle and make it a red circle. So now you can change these things and it will not erase all of your lines. But when you're just setting up, it's useful to have that on so you can interactively see what you're doing or not doing to your your lines. Then down here is the, a seed for randomness. If you have 
a particular seed other than zero, then it will always use uh, that randomness value. Otherwise, on zero, it'll always pick a different sort of basis for your randomness. All right, so that's it for the new stuff in the direction area. Uh, I'm working on the spacing area too. I'm not quite ready to talk about that yet, but uh, right now this is all pretty evenly spaced. But there will be options to adjust the uh, adjust things based on the spacing of the lines. That has more to do with this grow stuff down here, which I will talk about in future videos. All right, so the last thing here to talk about is the ability to share settings between different objects or uh, different oops, different groups. Uh, so now, I uh, oh yeah, there's a further indication of what is actually going to be edited with this link linked column. All right, so right now each of these groups has a different setting for each of the four different uh, categories of settings, so tracing and direction and dashes and all that. So right now they all have, all these groups have different uh, dash settings, for instance. Let's, let's make this one radial, let's make this one linear, let's make this one linear pointing down. Well, maybe we don't need all of them. Uh, so now we've got three groups. Let's make that one a bit thinner. So these dashes, uh, each one has their own dash settings. Uh, so now if you click on here, you can tell other groups, or you can say for this group, use the same settings as these other groups, or take the current settings and use them in the other groups too. So group three has that. Uh, make group two or groups one or group two use those same settings or you can do a shorthand uh, push to all which makes everything that's selected if you have multiple objects here selected then it will push to all groups for all objects for instance so now anytime you change the uh, the dash settings for these it'll change for all the groups that are attached to that resource uh, when you're sharing like that uh, it'll save as an actual resource, or it should. It should show up down there, actually. I'm not quite sure why it's not. That is a bug. Anyway, pretend you didn't see that. So that's kind of an overview of what's going on with the engraving tool. Uh, much more to come. I hope to have more time this summer to work on it. Um, I guess stay tuned.